Best Ball is taking over. With millions of dollars on offer across various sites, stakes as low as $2 to enter a draft. So how can you win it all? Well, I'm going to help you. Drawing on years of my expertise in the best ball streets and years of pouring over best ball data, I'm going to give you a complete rundown on best ball, along with my tips you need to win life-changing mounts in 2024. What is best ball? Best ball, it's risen in popularity swiftly, in part because it encapsulates the one part of fantasy that's the most fun, the draft. In best ball, we draft and then forget about our teams for the rest of the season. No waivers, no trades, no having to worry about setting your lineup 10 minutes before the game's kickoff. Each week, the platform sets your optimum lineup for you. With none of these concerns about having to set a lineup each week, our focus can be solely on the draft. That allows us more time to focus on the best strategies, the best player takes, and to consider how many of these drafts we want to do. What types of best ball are there? With best ball exploding in popularity, there's more and more different types of formats available to users. Traditional season long best ball involves competing against other users just in your draft. And depending on the platform you choose, you could be competing in a three man, six man, 12 man draft. Dynasty best ball is also becoming more popular, particularly for those sickos who've kind of reached the limit of the amount of dynasty leagues that they can manage week to week. Dynasty best ball still involves all the fun of trading, all the fun of building your roster in the way that you want to shape it, but it also relies on best ball scoring so that you don't have to worry about those start and sit decisions. Tournament best ball though, that's by far the most popular and the most fun of all best ball contests, and that's what a lot of content is tailored towards. Typically best ball tournaments involve a standard 12 person draft, then around week 14 or 15, depending on the platform, the top one or two teams progress into the first round of the playoffs. This is what we call advancing, and advancing teams is really important. Once you advance, you'll be matched up with other teams who've also progressed out of their 12-team league. So then it becomes really about which players do you have that are different to them? How are you constructing your roster in a way that is giving you a leverage on those teams? For the last two years, Underdog's main contest, Best Ball Mania, has had over 670,000 entries in it. Each user is allowed up to 150 teams each. At $25 an entry, that's going to cost you $3,750 to max enter it. The top two teams after week 14 both advance into the playoffs. The differences between a standard season-long league or winning one of these large-scale tournaments, it's huge and the strategy can get deeper and deeper, all while relying on a little bit of good luck and fortune along the way. More importantly, choosing the right budget for you the right price range and the one which makes you feel like you've got an advantage is massive. Drafters has tournaments from $2, DraftKings and Underdog both have contests from $3, FFPC starts at $5. After you get past these low budget options, the sky's the limit really with contests on offer with as much as 10 grand entry fees. The largest prizes on offer in 2024 are in Underdog's Best Ball Mania, which is a $25 entry, that has 1.5 million up top. DraftKings Millie Maker, which is a $20 entry, also has 1.5 million up top. The DraftKings contest is an 882,000 person contest with a final with 1,021 people in it. So as these tournaments increase in size, it becomes harder and harder to become really profitable in these tournaments. So strategy and little edges that we can gain anywhere become even more important. If you haven't signed up to any of these sites, check the links below for referral offers. We've got them for all three major sites and hit the subscribe button so that I can keep bringing you videos that are going to help you win on these platforms. In 2023, Underdog paid out a total of $25 million prize money for contests. They ran 47 different best ball tournaments in one year alone. There'll be a plethora of contests available across the different sites this year and figuring out how you want to spend your budget it's really essential to get the best out of your budget this year. Payout structures can be friendlier in the higher stakes drafts, particularly those priced $100 and up. But if you're mainly focused on drafting a lot, if you just enjoy drafting and building a portfolio, then you might want to consider the $5 or cheaper contests. Underdog constantly churn them out. Roster construction. How you allocate your picks is the absolute pinnacle part of constructing a roster. There is no point having an incredible quarterback room with five quarterbacks taken out of the first hundred picks. Because now if you've taken those, you've missed out on taking wide receivers, running backs, even tight ends in that range who could all turn into league winners. But you've been busy taking five players, four of which who won't even make you start in lineup on a given week. There's very little reason to ever take more than three quarterbacks in a best ball tournament. 
Looking at underdog specifically, if we use the data from the last couple of Best Ball Mania tournaments, we can see the advance rates of all rosters in the competition, broken down by how teams allocated their picks. Average advancement is 16.7%, so above that is good, below that, bad. The table shows that it was optimal to have two quarterbacks, six running backs, eight wide receivers and three tight ends. Unfortunately, that would require an extra roster pick on underdog, which is an 18 round draft. The reality is you want to be threading the needle similar to that. 2682, 2673, they're both rosters that can work. On DraftKings, unlike Underdog, they don't release as much contest data about their best ball offerings as we'd like. Still though, we can learn something by looking back at the teams that made the finals and seeing what worked for them. In 2022, the average build of a team that made the 969 team final had 2.6 quarterbacks, 6.2 running backs, 8.2 wide receivers, and 2.75 tight ends. Across both 2022 and 2023 on DraftKings, 3683 has been by far the most common build in the finals. The next nearest was 2693. So it makes sense that we want to build a good amount of teams using those roster constructions if we're playing on DraftKings. Now that we know what our final roster should look like and how it should be constructed on pure numbers basis, we can figure out how we can get there. There are four major strategies that you'll hear about a lot in best ball. Hero RB or anchor RB as it's sometimes known, that involves taking one running back in round one or two, allowing us to feel safe in the knowledge that your anchor is a high upside, high floor player. And then after these first selections of a hero RB, you're gonna favor wide receiver, elite tight ends or quarterbacks for like the next five rounds or so. You really don't wanna be starting to pay attention to running back again till at least round six or seven. In 2024, that means you could end up with Christian McCaffrey, Brees Hall, Bijan Robinson, Jameer Gibbs, Saquon Barkley, or Jonathan Taylor as your hero running back. Zero RB. 2023 was a really successful year for Zero RB. Some of the biggest contest winners deployed this method incredibly successfully. While the name Zero RB may have the word zero in it, most Zero RB rosters are going to end up with six to seven, maybe even eight running backs on the roster. Zero RB as a system probably would have done a lot better a lot earlier in getting people to adopt it if it had just been called late round running back instead. Both these strategies leave you free to take running backs in the best area of the draft for them, pick 73 to 110. I go into more detail about that and why it's such a good area to draft them in in this video here. You should check that out when this video finishes. Other roster constructions you might hear about include dual running back. This means you take two running backs in the first two rounds. Pat Corain of Legendary Upside used this roster construction in 2022 when he won $2 million playing Best Ball Mania. He had a roster that started with Austin Eckler and Saquon Barkley. This year, with running backs being pushed down further, it's still in play, but you're going to have to get really wide receiver heavy very quickly after the first two rounds in order to catch up at the wide receiver position. Otherwise, you're going to just miss out on the top talent. If you start dual RB, I'd be very hesitant about taking a quarterback or a tight end in the first seven rounds. You need those picks after the two running backs to all be wide receivers. Lastly, robust RB. A robust RB draft will feature at least three running backs in the first five rounds. And some people expand the definition to include up to four running backs in the first five rounds. If you're going to go with this strategy, you've absolutely not going to draft more than four or five running backs. Because the theory is going, these early draft picks are going to hit and they're going to hit in a big way. So if they don't, your roster's toast already. And you simply can't afford to keep pouring large amounts of draft capital into the position when you've put so much into it early. This is a strategy that worked better years ago when there were more running backs who were every down players. But now as the NFL goes to more committee approaches, it's really hard to justify spending so much capital on running backs so early on. For more on all these strategies, you can read my articles for Fantasy Pros detailing each one. They're all in the description below. Structural drafting like this, it can overcome mistakes on our roster. Year after year, we see that players who adhere to these micro strategies like Hero RB, Zero RB, or Dual RB, it can help your rosters overcome poor player selections. It can be tempting to say, I'm just going to draft the best players. But it doesn't always work out that way. We've got loads of history of teams winning these big tournaments where they missed on certain players, but they still got there because they had a really good build. 
My player take sucked in 2023. Too much Cooper Cup, too much J.K. Dobbins, not enough Christian McCaffrey, but I still advanced well above the average rates because I built teams smartly. I understood how to allocate my resources. And if you can do that correctly, you'll have more success year on year in how you advance in these tournaments. Stacking. Mike Leone of Establisher Run found that 10.5 teams out of every 12 team draft are now doing some degree of stacking nowadays. So what's the best way we can do it? Stacking, it refers to having two or more players from the same team on your roster. Typically, we're talking about quarterbacks plus pass catchers, but any combination is better than none at all. Stacks have been commonplace in DFS for years. It works off the single principle of trying to get fewer things right in order to get everything right. If we believe one player in a game can have a big outcome, it means that scoring is probably going to be high in that game, and others in that game will get dragged along with them particularly if we're talking about a quarterback who's passing the ball and a wide receiver who's catching the ball. As we can see in this chart from established to run, having zero quarterbacks stacked consistently perform poorly. We need teams to advance to the next level of the playoffs, and these teams weren't doing it at an even average rate. Meanwhile, having two or three quarterbacks all stacked, that performed at a much better rate. Leone also found that the optimal stacking amount of players per roster was three to five on top of your quarterbacks. This means you should be aiming for one to three stack players per quarterback. It's more efficient to stick to these medium sized or small stacks, but of course, if you can get a bigger stack through to the finals and that game goes off, then it could absolutely rocket you to the top of the leaderboard. So don't be completely against big stacks. Week 17 correlation. The last thing we want is to get to week 17 and then not have enough juice in our team to win it all. Week 17 correlation means if we have a player from the Lions, then we should give a slight lean towards grabbing a player from the Niners who they play in week 17. Again, leaning into the theory that if one of these players has a big game, if the game pops off, then it's increasingly likely that both players or more players from that game also have a big game. Leone found that having three to nine players game stacked for week 17 correlation led to the best results. You can check out his best ball manifesto. It's linked in the description below. It really will help you take your game to the next level when it comes to best ball. Fast drafts or slow. Some people choose slow drafts as a viable method for getting in a large volume of entries, but you've got to be warned a 20 round best ball draft when it's going as a slow, it can take several weeks for it to get finished. Many players opt to have multiple drafts going at the same time. This way it offsets sitting around and waiting to make picks. On the other hand, fast drafts are a lot of fun. They tend to involve slightly more mistakes. As such, sharper drafters tend to prefer these. Typically, most platforms allow you 30 seconds per pick. So in 18 to 20 round draft, you're looking at 35 to 45 minutes to complete it. Your first draft of the season, it is going to be a bit crazy as you try to remember all your favorite sleepers, week 17 correlations, roster construction, and hope that nobody snipes you on your perfect stack that you've set up. As best ball season kicks into gear, I like to take a gentle swim in a few low budget drafts, find my feet, and then dip my toes into the medium and higher budget drafts. You know, much like a rookie quarterback, you'll find the game slows down for you a lot after getting some reps in. You can read the room so much easier. When we get to July or August, you might even want to start multi-tabling a few drafts at once. That way you can take advantage of ADP situations or when new contests launch that aren't going to be around for a long time. Balancing using ADP against rankings. Nearly all best ball platforms allow users to create their own rankings or upload ones that they trust to the site. You can get my rankings by hitting the join button down below, as well as loads of other best ball resources. Get access to our Discord, where I'm always on hand to help you with your draft questions. While drafting based on my rankings is my preferred method, there's an edge to be created by balancing using rankings against ADP, the average draft position. Sometimes, a site's ADP can be slow to catch up when there's player circumstances changing. For instance, a player gets suspended or a player is cut or a player is signed to a new team. So we want to be able to toggle back and forth between ADP and our rankings in order to see whether we can be taking advantage of that. Taking players who fall below their ADP, it can help us have unique rosters for tournament contests. So if 80% of people took Jameer Gibbs in 2023 in the third round and 20% got him falling to the fourth round. The people who took Gibbs in the fourth round, they had the potential to get very different teams to the 80% who were taking Gibbs in the third round because now those people in the fourth round were able to pair Gibbs with a third round talent. Beyond all else, scooping up ADP value has been proven to be a big winner over the years. Watching the draft board. 
It might seem obvious, but watching the draft board can give us a huge advantage. We've got various things we need to be thinking about, not only for our own team, but if you're trying to build a Niners Lions Week 17 game stack with Debo and Sam Laporta, are you keeping an eye out for a team who might be stacking Jameer Gibbs and Brandon Ayuk to see what they're doing? If you're picking towards the ends of draft boards, save 102 to 103 or 104, or on the other side of the board, can you leverage what teams wedge between you and the turn do? On this draft board, you can see I have CMC and Brandon Ayuk, and the 101 team has Debo Samuel. So when Brock Purdy comes to me in the eighth round, I know he's probably not making it around the turn to my ninth pick. So if I want him, now is the time to take him. On this one, picking at the 104, I've been building a Jag stack with Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram. The only other Jags players going before Trevor Lawrence are Brian Thomas and Travis Etienne. Thomas goes at the 7 while Etienne is with the drafter next to me at the 103. When Lawrence comes round to me in the 10th round, I could have taken him there, but he's past the Brian Thomas drafter on the other side. So my gamble becomes, take him now, or test the Etienne drafter to see if he wants to stack a quarterback with a running back. As they took Kirk Cousins one round earlier, and as quarterback running back, it's a slightly less conventional stack. I decide to push it, and of course Lawrence makes it around to me, and I get the stack I want at a slightly better value. So you can see the awareness of the rest of the room, it really helps. And it can also help to see how fast a certain position's going off the board so you can figure out if you're at risk of being left behind. If one team has taken four quarterbacks quickly, then you're going to want to take one before you get completely boxed out of a position. I've drafted. What now? Firstly, you need to tweet that draft board out because if somebody does a best ball draft and doesn't tweet out the draft board, did it even happen? Feedback can be brutal, but having these conversations, it's going to help you so much very quickly. If you want to talk about your rosters in a safe place with constructive feedback, join our Discord by hitting the join button down below. We'll give you constructive advice. We'll help people get better at drafting. All you got to do is join this channel from less than a dollar a month. Next, you've probably figured it out, but it's time to get in another draft. The more you do, the more you're going to get better at this. Keep your budget in mind and consider how many drafts in total you want to do between now and when the season starts. But doing drafts is absolutely going to help you get better very quickly. I got three more quick tips for you before we finish. But if you haven't already, hit the like and subscribe button down below. All we do around here is try to find ways to give you edges in fantasy football. Remember the bye weeks. Your team may look awesome on paper, but if all your running backs and quarterbacks have the same bye week, you're going to create a pretty big hole to climb out of because your score that week is going to be awful. Don't actively avoid players just because of their bye weeks, but just be mindful if I take this player, I'm going to have to take an extra player at that position to deal with bye weeks. Select the right balance of players. There's no sense in choosing seven running backs who are all profiling as third down running backs. We've got no chance to see an expanded workload. We've got to balance it between guaranteed workloads, upside, and paths to big workloads. Spread exposure to both early and late round targets. It can be tough to be highly exposed to players in the first round due to the randomness of our pick assignments. And after all, nobody drafting has ever had the 101. But as we get later into the draft, we should be mindful of not getting too attached to one player. Even if you're convinced that Bryce Young is about to have the greatest second year campaign for a quarterback ever, if you draft him in 80% of your leagues and then he sustains a season ending injury in training camp, that's going to be a lot of rosters with a dead spot already. Players in this range of a the draft, they're dart throw types, and it makes sense that we want to use as many darts as possible. In 2023, late round players like Kyron Williams and Puka Nakua, they turned into absolute league winners. There weren't too many people who were going heavy on them every single time. But if you balance your exposures, it's easier to land on those kinds of players. That's all for this video, but check out all the links in the description. There's loads of stuff there that's going to help you in. Leave any questions you have in the comments. I will answer 100% of them. Be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. And if you want to hear my thoughts on the best area to draft running backs in 2024, check out this video right here, right now.